Welcome back to Fire to Fork and welcome back to my backyard. So today we are going to do tacos and we're going to do a little bit fancy tacos and I've got a lot of meat here so I brought a lot of friends. So I've got Nick and Nick who you know from the Kimberly series if you watch that. We've got their Nick's girlfriend and Nick's Sorry, Nick's fiance and Nick's wife. Not that it differentiates because they're both called Nick. We've got Billy inside who's just about to go to bed. Uh, Sam's here. So everyone's going to have a try of these tacos and we'll get some opinions. As usual, there's a code word somewhere in this episode. So make sure you comment that code word down below on YouTube for the chance to win a copy of my book. We're also going to do a little bit of a comparison. Now, <clears throat> we have got the fanciest steak we can get our hands on because I wanted to try it and because Jack Creek said, hey, do you want to try this? And I was like, well, yeah, obviously I want to try it. I've never been able to justify doing, wag doing using Wagyu for bloody tacos and you definitely do not need to. You can just use any, not any, I recommend an Angus skirt steak. They're really, really nice. Dolphin, what are you using, Angus? Yeah. Using Angus? Flat iron. Angus flat iron. So here we've got a flank, here we've got a skirt steak, all similar to a sort of a flat iron. They're just a thin, kind of a very grainy steak and you, you, you slice, anyway, we'll go into the slicing and stuff. Now what we're gonna do is do one in the carne asada um, marinade and the other one is going to be done with just salt and pepper. And we're gonna compare the two. Actually, I'm gonna put that one back in the fridge. The reason I'm chucking that back in the fridge is because this, these should be done cold. Uh, because they are thin, you want them to crisp up on the outside before they overcook on the inside. Now let's get to the carne asada marinade. Okay, we're gonna start with a quarter of a cup of soy. This is an eighth cup measure, because I don't know where my quarter is. Third of a cup of olive oil. Two limes, or about a third of a cup. Quarter of a cup of orange juice. Two tablespoons of balsamic. One and a half teaspoons of paprika, or you can use chipotle powder if you like. One teaspoon of oregano. One teaspoon of cumin. One teaspoon of onion powder. A bit of floor garlic. Oh, thank you very much. Get a beer delivery midway, I recommend that. All right, that is all in. We'll get that together. Oh, hold on. It needs some coriander too, or cilantro, depending on where you're from. So this is cilantro, coriander, chopped green soap, depending on what your flavor profile is. I will say my back is very, very warm standing this close. I've just got a very short deck, which means that I can't stand very far away from the fire. Okay, let's chuck our meat in there. And these are huge bits. So this stuff should stick quite well to the, um, to the meat. So you have like a little bit of a deep section, a little bit of a shallow section, and you can just toss it around in there. And then because this is very thin, I am gonna put this in a freezer for the next half an hour. That sounds counterintuitive, but I want it to be really cold so that when I cook it, the middle stays rarer than the outside. Okay, time for a freshen up. And then, we're gonna make some salsa. Now, I like a little bit of a smoky roast, roasted salsa. It's just really easy when you have a fire, because you just get your ingredients and you plonk them on the grill. Whole. Plonk, plonk, plonk. Couple of chilies. I'd prefer to use jalapenos, but my local supermarket didn't have any, so we're just using chilies. And a white onion in half. Chuck that on there. And we're just gonna leave them to sort of blister and blacken and that's it. Simple. And while we're doing that, actually, I may as well just do a little bit of corn because I'm going to make a little bit of guac and I like a little bit of roasted corn in my guac. Chuck that on there as well. All right, these chilies are looking good. They're like nicely charred, a bit blackened. I don't want too black. I don't like it to be all, um, uh, like just to be all, all black because you end up just the smoke and acrid, yeah, as you say, acrid taste just takes over. Um, but certainly, a bit of blackened skin is good. Oh, these are starting to look good. That will soften nicely. Again, like sort of about that much is what you want. If it gets a little bit more, it's okay. You just don't want it across the board. Yep, that's sort of about right for the onion. You can see there. And they've been on there for about uh, probably 15 minutes, something like that. So it'll probably be 25 all up. Okay, these veggies look great. So these are quite soft, a little bit of blackness on there little blackness around, 
corn's going well. I forgot to do this bit of garlic earlier, so I put it on late. So that'll be the last thing to go in, but the other stuff is good to go. So I'm just gonna put that straight in the blender. Bit of bloody onion in there. Now, hopefully this garlic is done enough. If not, rawish garlic is still pretty good. It's been on for about 15 minutes or something. The exact um, recipe for all of this will be in the video description as usual. So I'm gonna do about, I don't know, five or six cloves, little cloves of garlic in here. And I'm gonna throw like half a chili in because at the moment, Sam has a whole bunch of food aversions with pregnancy. So she doesn't like chili. So I throw half a chili in and then later on, I'll throw the rest of the, oh, actually that needs some coriander in there. Throw like that much in. It's not a very camping friendly thing, which is exactly why I'm doing this at home because I probably wouldn't go to go and have all these extra ingredients and need heaps of freezer space and need a blender and all that stuff if I was in the bush. Even though I could, it's not really achievable for most. Oh, I think I said not to use hot stuff in this. <laughs> I ignored that. All right, let's test this salsa. It's a bit too hot. It needs salt, pepper, and honestly, it needs a little bit of time to cool down because I want to throw some lime in there, but it's just going to cook the lime with that hot, those hot ingredients. So I'm just gonna leave that up to the side and we'll deal with that and finish it off later on. So yeah, basically one small head of garlic in there to like five tomatoes, maybe four tomatoes. Probably went a little bit heavy on the tomatoes, but you can counter that with more chilies and lime and other stuff. Can't really have too much tomato in salsa. Now, I reckon it's time to do some steaks. First thing first, we'll get the grill set up, nice and low. Lots of heat, because these are gonna blast. Okay, first things first, let's do this carne asada. Looks so good. I reckon this is gonna take like two minutes. I mean gloves. And yes, these gloves will be coming soon. Well, probably like three months, but they are bloody good. By the way, the thing I'm cooking on is called the Osbry Patio Bry, which is appropriate because it's on my patio. I may or may not have just forgotten that and my mates are laughing at me. It used to have a different name, okay? It was like the Osbry Big bry or something like that. All right, it's starting to brown up. Yes, there's flame on this. Don't worry, it's gonna cook so fast that the flame will not let a chance, it won't have a chance to um, get that acrid taste. Tell you what, I did some flame on some meat on TikTok. Woo! I'm not used to TikTok. And they are not a fan of flame, apparently. <laughs> Now let's quickly salt and pepper this and chuck it on. So both of these are not frozen. I put them in the freezer so that they would be cold because they were kind of getting towards room temperature. Um, I just want them to be cold. Okay, I'm just gonna put that one down. By the way, I like to use one of these at home. I don't like to carry one because they're not good for carrying because they don't stack properly, but a breadboard with a little bit of an edge to hold the meat juices in is good. All right. So we're gonna make some guac, which I like to keep really simple. Um, Sam kindly smashed up four avos for me. So those of you who don't know, Sam is my wife. We don't like to put her on camera because her job gets frustrating. She gets recognized at work and stuff and then she, the patients don't, don't open up to her and it's, it's, it's caused problems in the past and that's how it works. So, put that roast corn in there, salt, a bit of pepper, some lime, and if you don't know this, you roll your limes, and then you cut the cheeks off, so you don't cut it in the middle, and you get heaps more juice out of it. Why did I mix it with those? That was really stupid. That has to go back on the barbecue. All right, so I'm a moron, as a videographist, <laughs> um, and I forgot to hit record. So we're gonna do that again. <laughs> so I'm gonna quickly grill some tacos. And while I do that, let's just chop up some meat against the bloody grain. So that's not against the grain, that's with the grain. This is against the grain. Bit of raw onion, some salsa. All right, everyone, dive in. Let's do it. Yeah, turn it off, turn it off. Mm. Yep. Still great. So, oh. Man. The thing we all notice 
It was the mate. No. I genuinely thought the mate wouldn't make that much difference. And it really does, don't you reckon? That's epic. <coughs> that is so juicy. Like you have tiny side of Chaco's ring. Yeah. That. Mm. Mm. This is way better. It's just like that little <laughs> step up for, on the from the mate actually does make a huge difference. So I didn't expect it. But if you can splash out mm. and spend thirty not spend sixty not thirty on it to feed six people, mm. actually worth it. And it's not that spicy. No, I like it's great. No, it's not. No. I mean, no. you can adjust spice levels for however you like. Now, I'm just going to carve a bit of this. I'm going to try just the meat. Mm. Perfectly balanced. Oh, that's really good. Now, if you've got cheap meat, another little mm. trick mm. is dice it really small. You just really tiny little pieces like that. And that has, is how you make cheap meat, not chewy. <laughs> You're too small to be chewy. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one, and don't forget to comment the code word. That's it, it's my mate. Oh, that is so good. I'm gonna put that on a steak sandwich tomorrow. That is so delicious. Oh.